नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर व्यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव फॉर इन सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग दिस लाइव ऑन ई विद्या चैनल्स चैनल नंबर सिक्स एंड इलेवन एज वेल एज ऑन आर एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल एंड डियर लर्नर दिस इज आर वेरी स्पेशल सेशन ऑफ मनोदर्पण परिचर्चा एंड दिस इज वेरी स्पेशल इनिशिएटिव ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन वेर वी टॉक अबाउट मेंटल वेलबींग ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड दम साइको सोशल सपोर्ट एज वेल एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो मोर अबाउट दिस इनिशिएटिव वी हैव अ डेडिकेटेड वेबसाइट दैट इज डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट मनोदर्पण डॉट एजुकेशन डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट आर एन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू जॉइन द लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग यू कैन लॉग इन टू आर फेसबुक पेज दैट इज नेशनल काउंसिल ऑफ एजुकेशनल रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी एंड वी हैव अ नेशनल टेली हेल्पलाइन नंबर एज वेल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो मोर अबाउट इट यू कैन कॉल अस आर टेलीफोन नंबर इज एट डबल फोर एट डबल फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू एंड इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरी एंड क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू आर स्पेसिफिक टाइटल एंड टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सेशन दैट इज प्रिपेयरिंग एडोलसन स्टूडेंट्स फॉर एग्जामिनेशन यू कैन फील फ्री टू कनेक्ट टू अस हू आर वेरियस मीडियम यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन आर टेलीफोन नंबर दैट इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन ईदर यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मेल एट आर ईमेल एड्रेसिस दैट इज फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर टेलीविजन स्क्रीनस राइट नाउ एंड द फास्टेस्ट मीडियम इज टू जॉइन अस थ्रू आर लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग दैट मीन्स यू हैव टू जॉइन गो टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ आर दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल यू हैव टू गो टू द लाइव चेट बॉक्स एंड यू हैव टू ड्रॉप योर कॉमेंट आउट दे आर एक्सपर्ट विल बी हैप्पी टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन एंड क्वेरीज एंड द टाइटल दैट i just share with you is preparing adolescent students for examination and what are those key points that you need to keep in your mind while uh, examination uh, you don't need to worry about that dear learners and viewers our expert will be help you will are there uh, to help you out if you have any query feel free to connect to us let's meet our experts uh, let's start with professor anil kumar k you are professor of education from rie nceert mysuru very warm welcome sir Yeah, thank you, Renuji. Uh, and we have our another panelist. You are Dr. Virendra. You are practicing psychologist from U and Me Counseling Center, Hyderabad. Very warm welcome, sir. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have our another panelist with us. You are Dr. Bharati Kula Shekhra. You are clinical psychologist and practicing counselor from Mysore. Very warm welcome, ma'am. Namaste. Namaskar, Dr. Bharati. Let's move forward and. towards our next panelist you are miss pallavi sharma you are deputy manager from inspira management services and practicing counselor from bengaluru very warm welcome ma'am thank you and last but not the least we have our another panelist with us you are miss s padmashri you are pgt from kv number no. 2 air force station tambaram chennai very warm welcome ma'am and dear learners and viewers if you have any query please feel free to connect to us and before we begin this session let me share some very important piece of information with you all about g20 presidency we are very proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation that is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solution for well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or we can say the whole world is one family so let's quickly begin this session and let's move towards our first speaker anil sir will uh, ask you a question and we would like to know about more about the uh, topic please introduce this topic and let us know highlight about the importance of preparing adolescent students for examination so what are those sir? please explain yeah thank, thank you renuga ji dear students and my other viewers good afternoon to all of you students today we are going to discuss an important topic titled preparing adolescent students for examinations you must have observed that everyone is now focusing on examination as the board exams are near nearby today just now there was an interaction of the selected students with the prime minister of india on parichha par charcha parichha par charcha is an annual event where our prime minister interacts with the students who are appearing for the forthcoming board examinations 
the prime minister also gave replies to the students queries related to the examination stress and all other issues related to examination and how to prepare for the examination he says that exams are like festivals and you must celebrate it this is how he gives advice to the students that one should not worry about the examinations why we are discussing so much about examinations now do you know that uh, no, 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 such discussions were not happening when we were students right we used to write the examinations without any stress and even without any parents pressure parents even they were not much bothered about our examinations however this is not the same case now you can see that a very parent teacher and even the society is much worried about the performance of students in the examinations before you appear for the board examination itself you may have to write many other competitive examinations also a very rare examination examination one after the other as if this is going to decide your future why there is a huge hype on examinations because we have given undue importance given for examinations because of that many schools in our country have moved away from teaching to coaching culture it is becoming now a, as an epidemic there is an unhealthy competition happening among the students as the students are informed that examinations or the marks are going to be the deciding factor for your future though it is not fully correct nowadays we are you know finding out another culture that is cent percent culture that is getting 100 out of 100 or getting a plus in all subjects this also leads to many pressures and students may find various shortcuts and it also leads to many mal practices dear students please remember that examinations are just only one important event in your life exams are not about your life and death and one examination cannot determine your excellence or true potentials as we all know that two individuals are not alike each individual vary from the other in terms of their abilities such as the skills interest attitude aptitude values and even creativity thus you all have to perform as per your ability only even your learning styles are different from one to other then how can we expect the same marks you must have seen that there is an examination system which measure all individuals on the same scale this is making you all to be more stressful and also the teachers and even parents and the society expects from you much more than what you are capable of doing but i want to tell you all of you students this is it is not the marks or the score what you get is more important but the knowledge that you are acquiring and also the skills you are mastering they are more important than your marks just i will make you a joke now okay someone was talking about you know sometimes earlier do you know what is the difference between a failed student and a past student do you know it very simple a failed student forget before examinations whereas a past student forget after the examinations okay how is it Gee. okay <laughs> this is the only difference why is it happening because many of you are focusing on getting more marks not focusing on learning for knowledge but i must tell you that you should not follow this once you focus on knowledge and gaining it then definitely that knowledge become more permanent and marks will automatically follow thus you must focus on learning for 
knowledge okay right students do you know what is the best part of your life it is the schooling days you must be remembering throughout your life how was how beautiful it was and during schooling days you do not have much responsibilities also okay the one of the major responsibility you have it is to study well and get good scores in your examination so do your karma do not worry about the result even if failure happens think that failures are stepping stones to success we have seen that many students seriously take up studies only when examination dates are announced when the results came or announced then you know when we ask why you got less marks then the student used to reply that i did not get much time for examination preparing for examination but you all know that once you you know reach to the 10th class or 12th class there is a board examination and at the end of the year the board used to conduct examinations it is very well known to everyone so but you won't prepare for at the beginning is it not so there should have been a planning and preparation at the beginning of the year itself not like the 11th hour you know you plan and you know you get more tense and also various stress which may affect sometimes your good health also so today we have a discussion here on you know how to prepare for planning and prepare for your examinations and we have put deliberately in the title you know the adolescence group do you know why we have put that much of the time the mm. adolescence group like you are diverted to different activities during this phase of your life your attention may vary from studies to something else sometimes your peer group may compel you to indulge in many activities or you yourself may be attracted to many things which become a barrier in your studies so that is how we thought that we will focus more on your adolescence group which group you know they are going to the board examination very soon it is in this context we thought that you know how we can help you in giving certain tips for prepare preparation of your future examinations not only one but again we thought that you know we will include such topics which may also help you to become a good learner learner for your entire life also okay so today we have we are fortunate to have for other esteemed panelist to discuss about various aspect of this topic i am sure that this discussion will be very fruitful to each one of you to plan and execute your studies so that you may get better performance in your forthcoming examination i wish every one of you the best thank you over to renu thank you so very much sir and very rightly said by you that one paper cannot decide and speak about a student's talent skills are always more important than marks and uh, our students should and must focus on the skills rather than the marks and let's move towards our next speaker uh, miss pallavi ma'am i would like to ask you about the uh, adolescent students plan and preparation for their examination how they can prepare for their examination ma'am please explain to us ma'am sure renu ma'am uh, namaskar all the viewers and thank you renu ma'am for giving me opportunity to speak on the topic planning for studies and exam for students handling multiple subjects submitting assignment on time revising syllabus and get well prepared for examination can be easy if they focus on few of the things or certain things that we will throw light today on few of the things like managing time hmm. by breaking study time and lengthy task into smaller portions also making effective schedules for spreading out the subject um across the schedule using memory aids taking practice exams and mock tests exams 
So today, let me first um, talk about chunking. So as you can see in the slide, chunking is a method of learning which breaks down the larger information into the smaller parts. Organizing different kind of information into chunks or pieces will help students to easily remember or recall the information. As rightly said by Anil sir, that you know the difference between um, the well-prepared student and not prepared student is just everyone has the information, just recalling or retrieving that information is important. Right, so many researches has shown that study in short chunks of pieces is most effective way to learn, right? And when we do that, the brain stores that information permanently. So now, how can we manage time by chunking the study time available to us? So you can see in the slide like uh, we presenting right now, students can identify the time available to them other than the school schedule. Once you have done it, divide rest of the study time into chunks of 30 to 50 minutes each. You can allot some study time, you know, or the piece before the school hours as well. Why? Because brain can take in more information at the start of the day. Students will feel more focused as they will start afresh. So if you see the um, slide, there are 10 to 15 minutes break between each study chunk. In these short breaks, you can stretch your body, listen to the music, hydrate yourself, make a quick call if you have to. So you can do all these things in these short breaks. Student can also include a long break of one hour or so Definitely you can reduce it to 30 minutes or 45 minutes based on your need. But in that one uh, hour long break, you can include a dinner. You can, uh, you know, do practice some um, things which are of your interest, like drawing, dancing, being on social media, watching TV, connecting with friends and family. This will freshen your mind increase energy, productivity, and ability to concentrate and focus back on the task. That's why breaks are very important. Now, time-consuming tasks, like in the next slide, I'll show you. The tasks that are lengthy and, you know, are time-consuming, they can also be chunked or broken down into manageable pieces and spread across several days, which will help to manage study more effectively and students will not get stressed out with the lengthy or the time consuming tasks. For example, if students need to write an essay, maybe a social essay that uh, takes three to four hours to complete, there is no need to devote three to four hours of chunk of time on a single day. Student may end up, you know, overwhelming themselves and you know not be, be able to uh, focus on the schedule and they will have a mismatch on that because suddenly that task of four hours lengthy task came into the schedule so there is no need to get overwhelmed or feel uh, you know uh, how to manage it we can you know spread it out like day one in the previous slide that I have said one day uh, can you know allotted for the outline of the question till we make the final draft for the submission. So all these seven days can be divided into the small chunks of half an hour. Now, when you are, uh, you know, have done that, assign the task to the study chunk, specific study chunk, like um, add specific things like you can see in the previous slide uh, that we can add specific things like uh, read class notes for chapter six of English, memorize new vocabulary, write a letter, revise long question chapter number four of history, 
so all these tasks are specific you now exactly know what you need to do instead of you know just writing that learn english learn zoology do maths so that specific city should be included before i go to the next topic uh, or next slide let me tell you you need to prioritize when you allot a study chunk consider classes which are the toughest to take up first assigning long tasks or uh, you know frequently you should include these long tasks or the toughest task in your subjects because you have most of the energy and concentration when you first begin working on the hardest tasks which will help you to attack the difficult subject and you will not set in the fatigue you will not get tired you will not get you know um, you not feel burnout because you are giving your whole energy and your whole um, potential to that difficult task at the first for example if chemistry isn't your stronger subject devote 50 uh, minutes of time of that subject every day or every other day in english um, if you are okay with that 30 minutes every 3 to 4 days in a week might work if social or art is a cake of peace for you it's very easy then you can you know a lot one week for that uh, once a week for that so student you don't need to study the same subject two days in a row just space it out you can recall more information and experience less stress if the spacing is done in the previous slide can we have a previous slide please so in the previous slide uh, we have spaced out um, the subjects so that you know there is less of uh, stress and more of recalling so we can recall the subjects better if we space them out another important thing is try to be consistent with the study time and location you do not have to you know i'm not saying that you have to devote one specific space when you are studying but for the time chunk that you have deci decided that specific time you have to study at that particular place for example if you are doing maths and you like to do it on your study table sit and do it on the study table for that particular amount of time that you are doing maths but if you want to study english and learn the vocabulary words sitting near the window near on the chair that your favorite chair then you can do make it a spot but follow the same at e, uh, on each day that this is the time for english i will study on this chair and this is the um, time for my maths i should have that particular area where there is no disturbance there is no hindrance in your study that can help you so now uh, what can we do before the exams write all your test dates and assignments deadlines in your planner gather your syllabus notes worksheets extra information and other important details of each subject this will help students to get organized plan time well and stay prepared with revisions before examination dates during exam use a day planner with the blank spaces where you can plan enough time slots and hands on revisions for each subject organizing information is very important right for retrieval so organizing information can be done by effective revision revision happens effectively when you are able to use few of the memory aids like flash cards mnemonics mind maps flow charts diagrams especially flash cards are particularly useful when you need to memorize a large amount of similar pieces of information such as vocabularies formulas etc so you can use flash cards 
being successful on an exam not only involves preparation and utilization of the resource it is also indirectly linked to the student's confidence level and it's very important to rehearse exam take mock test practice previous tests right so mock test or solving the pa past exam papers will help students to decode the pattern by knowing the type of question asked the topics that are frequently tested on the format of answers required so mock test familiarize the students with the real exam conditions they get to know that they have ability to apply concept in a limited time frame during the exam this helps to build in confidence and achieve stable state of mind when student gets confident and stable state of mind they will there will be no anxiety there will be no fear right so after once you have done this mock test then what we have to do we have to focus on the doubts that we have and how we can do that student can make study groups they can discuss with each other they can clarify their doubts they can clarify their doubts by um, approaching teachers and the parents as well so this all will give the clarity in your thoughts and complete understanding of the concept that is what exactly you know that makes a difference between a prepared and a well prepared student so now talking about preparedness just before the exams your exam is there right the previous day how you should do prepare your material for your exams the day prior keep your hall ma uh, hall cards identity cards pen pencil eraser calculator water bottle whatever stuff you are carrying just keep it a day prior on a proper place where you can achieve them uh, or take them um avoid rushing to examination halls reach prior your exams start your um, it will help you to you know relax your body and mind do not drink lot of water before entering into the examination hall take deep breaths and repeat positive affirmations this will help you to enter the examination hall with a relaxed mind and body and a positive approach you will get before you sit for the examination so now quick tips are on the slide organize your study time use flow charts and diagrams practice previous year's question papers organize study group with friends start your revision early take regular breaks and i would in the end like to tell you that the best study plan is balanced one you should include good study planner recreational activities healthy meals exercise and block out time to connect with friends and family also go for a walk jog do some exercise also enjoy some time in between and don't forget to take 7 to 9 hours of sleep getting a little less also occasionally is fine but sticking to a consistent sleep schedule will help you to achieve the best from uh, that's all from my side and students all the best for your preparation for the studies and for your exams thank, thank you, you so very much thank you so very much pallavi ma'am for your valuable tips and dear learners you just need to be a focused student you need to study in chunks as ma'am just said and you need to prepare hard and you need to make your time table as well and you prioritize your study chunk start with the tough one and you have to practice you have to be organized and you have to be disciplined before examination that is what ma'am just go, uh, told you and let's move towards our next speaker but before that let me tell all our viewers and learners in case they have any query and questions please feel free to connect to us uh, you can drop your comment in our youtube channel that is nceert official you have to go to the live chat box and you have to drop your comment out there we are receiving your a lot of comments uh, we appreciate your efforts but if you have any query we will be more happy to answer all your queries and doubts if you have any so sir dr virendra sir please explain to us why it's so important uh, of being healthy both physically and mentally sir during examinations yeah 
Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for this uh, opportunity. Uh, let me congratulate all the students who are very successful even after the Corona stage for two years. Right, and sir. once again, they started uh, facing the world with more confidence with the support mm. of teachers and the parents. And also, we have to you know think about the uh, sessions taken by uh, Pallavi ma'am as well as Anil Kumar sir. They were all talking to you about the how you need to plan to crack your exam with the better performances. And also, we need to understand about uh, a few things. You know, I have a, a few case studies I would like to uh, share with you, all of you. Uh, before Corona, I was happy to go to a colleges uh, to visit and the schools also. I could see uh, one student was very weak. He's unable to sit also. He was totally, you know, drooling and uh, uh, taking the support of the bench without writing anything. So I just uh, interacted with the teachers and I went to the boy. Then I started talking about him. Why? Why you are uh, not able to write? With a great difficulty, with a lot of uh, exhaustion, he's sharing that, you know, for the past two, three days, I'm not reading properly. Right, sir. Properly. I could not. It was not support for me. All these things, you know, the child was, you know, sharing. So I really, that made me feel terribly bad because parents are there, then the siblings are there, even teachers also are accessible. Why can't they could uh, give awareness to the child that you need to eat properly so that you can fit yourself physically good? The other case study, you know, one child was uh, sleeping on the table totally. Then the teacher's efforts were failed to make him awake. So with a great difficulty after 45 minutes and they brought the water, they brought the tea and made him to uh, feed the child. Then he become a little more active and started writing. After the exam, when we interacted, I asked him that, why, why you are doing this? You know, do you know this is a very important exam? And why you are sleeping? He said, you know, for the past two days, I'm not sleeping, sir. I'm not getting uh, sleep because of the anxiety. Hmm. Then what are you doing in the exam hall? In the exam hall, he is totally sleeping. It is beyond his control. He is unable to control his sleep. And this has happened. The another uh, year, I have another uh, experience with the students. You know, I am uh, talking to the students uh, in the principal room. One student was brought. He is totally shaking, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, sweating and uh, is not able to talk, is not able to write anything. Then with, uh, you know, the uh, uh, principal, you know, made me to talk with him. We had a couple of minutes to share things. Then we made him to you know, do some relaxation exercises. Then he become very stable. Then I asked him, what is the reason that you're feeling so much uh, stressed up? He said, no, sir, I was uh, aiming to get the topper in the class. So when I look at the question paper, there are some questions. Uh, I really did not understand. So I, my mind saying that you lost your first rank and you're not, you're not at all going to be the topper as expected by your teachers and your parents. See if you can look into these three case studies. <clears throat> One thing you can make it very sure that any student, it can be a board exam, it can be your local exam. First of all, we need to be very good physically. Then we need to be good psychologically also. So when you both mental and physical health maintains good, then you will definitely able to give your best performance. So I think these examples uh, might uh, made you to recollect or some of the students might have experiences with their friends in the classroom. Some of the students really experience these kind of things. I think the faculty and parents might uh, could relate these examples. So first of all, we need to understand that what really the exam means. You know, examination is simply an educational assessment indebted to what measure the test takers knowledge, skill and aptitude and memory. These are only the things for the uh, aim of any examination. So you are going to an exam where you are going to give this. That's all. How much time? Two and a half hours to three hours maximum. So in these three hours, if you can make yourself are the physically fit and also the mentally fit, then the aim of the exam will be finished. 
and whatever thing you will be having, you will be able to reproduce it in the exam. Even Madam was talking, Pallavi Madam was talking about the uh, fear and anxiety generates. Yeah, we need to understand. There are things we call them as fats. Fats means don't think that the uh, fat content of the body. No, this has a, an abbreviation. So we are going to talk about it also. And uh, what do we need to do for that? We need to be definitely make ourselves to be very fit physically and mentally. What fat? Fat means fear. A means anxiety. T means tension. S means stress. Why fear comes? Fear comes only when you think that there is a loss. What loss you are going to get? It means many of the students afraid of the, the unknown crowns they carry in their head. Like people may, if I get less performance, people may brand me that I am a loser. If I get less performance, parents may not offer me the, all the gifts. My friends may look me down. My teachers may ignore me. All these titles and the crowns they carry invisibly, that makes them feel fearful. And it is a common experience if you really focus that what is the aim of this emotion fear? So whenever there is a loss, when you perceive that there is a loss, then your body starts preparing for it to protect it. Or when there is a danger, you want to fight back. So if you can really look into the, the abbreviation of the fear, it just simply says that fiction experiencing as a reality. See how simple it is. You created some fiction that somebody may ignore you, somebody may look down you, somebody may not talk to you, somebody may not give the uh, honor for you. These are all fictions created by you. And you are experiencing that as a reality. So you all need to understand the feelings and the thoughts, whatever they pop up in your brain, they are not facts. You please make up this note. I hope the teachers and parents are there. You keep repeating to your children, your students. Feelings and thoughts are not facts. Just the come and go keep changing. Because we think that they have a lot of value, we'll take it. We'll keep it here. We think that they're all facts are going to happen and they happened also. So once you realize, sometimes our brain gives the automatic thoughts, automatic feelings. They are unhelpful things for us. Next, anxiety. If I don't get the questions which I already prepared for exam, in the exam, what happens? What's going to be in future? Or the way I, in which I prepared, if I am not going to reproduce it or recollect it in the exam, well, what happens? What my teachers think? What my friends think? What I become? I wanted to go for prestigious institutions and institutions may not really give me the admission. Then what happens? This is the anxiety. Anxiety means what? Perceived danger. It is not in danger, but you perceive it as a danger. For that, your physiological response. Physiological response to a perceived danger, we call, we generate the anxiety. Then tension. Tension means what? It is always talks between the two things. One is you wish to do. Second is the reality. So between these two, when you keep fighting in yourself, then you get the tension. And because of all these things, you generate the stress. So stress is what in simple terms we'll say, which you can invite some unrealistic things which you cannot do and somebody will force you or because of somebody's force, you try to take it on you, then you generate the stress. And because of this fat, you generate the stress. So to overcome all, all these things, first of all, you need to be mentally fit. And you know pretty well, the body and mind both are always hand in hand and they go together. And you know pretty well that in the stomach, you have a second brain, you know, small brain, 
called gut. And gut and mind always, you know, keep exchanging the communication. If you don't eat food properly, it communicates to your brain that you are weak. Then immediately, the anxiety starts. Anxiety, once it gets it that you generate a fear that I am not going to write anything, then it immediately communicates to your stomach and it will not allow you to eat anything. So these things will pop up and makes you become more stressful and it disturbs you to a larger extent and you are not allowed to write the exam. Though intellectually you are very good, but because of these simple things which we ignore often, it really disturbs you very much. So to give your best performance in the examinations, you are supposed to be physically, mentally good because you know that every human being born with 10 multiple intelligences and you have a body, canistic intelligence, interpersonal intelligence and uh, linguistic intelligence and you have naturalistic intelligence, arithmetic logic intelligence, music intelligence, spatial intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and also the existential intelligence. These are all intelligence you are already have this. So once you understand that you are born to be successful because you are equipped with so much, and another innovation in the 21st century is what? That you can learn anything. Across the globe, every human being has this ability to learn anything. If you are not able to recollect it, what does it mean? It means that your preparation is not adequate. So what do you know, need to know? You should know about yourself. How many times if I read so that without any mistakes, I can reproduce it. How many times I can practice so that I can reproduce without any issue. These things you need to understand. And Mr. Dr. Anil Kumar, in his presentation, he said that fail, difference between failure and the uh, success student. We can call the unsuccessful and the successful student. Unsuccessful student forgets the before the exam and the successful student forgets the after the exam. See how nicely he could relate that. So if you can see some of the characteristics of successful and unsuccessful student, both the students, successful and unsuccessful student, have born with the same intelligences. And you might be knowing across the globe of your age group, you'll have the same IQ level. 80% of the students have the same IQ levels. So there is no question of you are less, somebody is great. No. Then what is making them successful? It absolutely the practices and also be very honest with self. We call this a honest learning. Some of the students, you know, they bluff themselves. Their emotions pop up and then say that they bluff without getting also, they think that they got it because in the rush of preparing and still finishing the syllabus. So if you are really very honest with your learning, then definitely you will be uh, becoming a successful student. See, I will find one beautiful quote. I thought it will be helpful for you. A diamond is just a piece of charcoal that handles stress exceptionally well. So if you are able to understand the stress, what you're experiencing from where it is coming out, then when you really train yourself, then ultimately you become a person like a diamond in your own thought, your own expression, in your own performance. So learn a few important things. So to make yourself a good diet, eat regular food, don't skip. If you feel that some of the students feel that sleepy, if you eat more, then eat small amount in some regular interval of time. That will be more going to help you. So God will forgive you if you don't eat, but your neuron system never forgives. So you should be very, very conscious about it. So anxiety also comes because of that. Because if you, you are not about effective in preparing and giving back, and you are making your brain to believe that you prepared very well, and that will affect your neuron system. It knows what exactly it happens. So what happens in the exam definitely creates anxiety that I did not study well. I'm not sure that the 100% answer I'm going to reproduce it or not. Then the pressure of the exam and this self-doubt about you, then both the things will ruin your day. 
and it creates anxiety. So for that, what you need to do? Very simple things. Try to fit yourself better. Do physical exercise at least 45 minutes every day. Do some breathing exercise in that 45 minutes. And talk to your mom. Ask your mom. Mom is the best, uh, you know, physician to give that very good diet. Listen to your mom. Whether she is qualified, whether she is a professional, whether she is unqualified, whether she is a, a best person to always take care of you. And listen to your mom. Eat properly. Then set your goals properly. You know, use the formula, smart principle. I think most of the teachers might have already exposed this principle. This principle is very simple. Smart principle. S for specific, M for measurable, A for achievable, R for realistic, T for time bound. Use this, set your goals. But don't try to set goals because X said, because your mother said, because your father said, because your family uh, carrying a crown of always stoppers or because your classrooms, classmates uh, fed this, because your teacher told them, no, don't listen to them. Based on your own skill, based on your own desire, based on your own effort, based on your uh, ability to prepare for exams, set that goal. Then you are psychologically, you become very strong and confident and you are going to write exam very well. And follow these scientific methods and evidence-based practice. Whenever you prepare a long question, make it a point that you write it on the paper. Don't believe yourself. Many students, what they do is, they prepare and they close their eyes and then um, um, they start talking to themselves. They say that, yeah, yeah, I, reviewed, I revised. Who checked? Which person is checked whether you were revising same or not? No. These are our unhelpful, unscientific methods. So better do helpful and scientific methods that write down everything on the paper and check with your notes. Then if it is right, then only it is right. Don't bluff yourself. And as Pallavi Madam said that, you know, go with the positive affirmations. Always give the positive affirmations and they're all really, really going to help you for you. I know pretty well that the post-millionaire students are very, very creative, very, very positive about things what they do it. And uh, go with these preparations. I think you are all going to helpful and you are going to perform better. And if you have any queries, we are here to help you to give the best performance for you. So all the best and take care. Thank you so very much, sir, for your detailed information. So dear learners and viewers, there are fear, there are stress, anxiety and tensions, not only for you, but for your parents and for your guardians as well. You have to deal with them all. So please have a good mental health and physical health. As sir said, you have to and you need to follow them. Let's move towards our next speaker, Dr. Bharati Gula Kshirkra. Or ma'am, we just wanted to know about how can the adolescent students manage their examination stress? What are those points, ma'am? Yeah. Points or you can say mantras. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Quite audible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the previous speaker, uh, he gave a very good foundation for uh, you know the physical health as well as psychological health. Even though stress is considered as a psychological issue, it has got many connection with physical issues also. And uh, it, it, it is shown in the form of physical symptoms. So we can make out that a, a student is stressed out only through physical symptoms. And moreover, exam stress is a very, very common phenomenon that affects you know, each and every student of all ages. Even this age, if I take up an exam, there will be stress. But one hopeful thing is it is absolutely, completely normal to feel anxious or stressed before and during an exam. And, and, but the stress becomes overwhelming. It can have negative effects on a student's performance and overall well-being. That is why we are so much worried about stress. See, having a good preparation for examination, everything is fine. But during the examination or just before the examination, if the students stressed out, then definitely there will be a lot of negative effect, impact on their performance. Exam, what is, what is exam stress? That is very important to define. Exam stress is the feeling of tension and worry that comes from test-taking situations. It is normal to feel some stress about uh, upcoming tests, exam papers, and presentations. Uh, in fact, a small amount of stress uh, can challenge students to stimulate 
to work harder. We call it as eustress. We should not go to distress. It, it is eustress. So exam stress becomes problematic only when it, when it interferes with, with students' ability to perform and achieve that expected academic and learning goals. And again, when we are stressed, the brain releases high levels of cortisol. It's a scientific fact, which can cloud the way we think, get in the way of rational thoughts. Because of this, it is, it is very important to stay cool, calm, and collected as you can, as much as you can during the examination period. And then if we further move on, exam stress affects, as I told you, each and every student in varying ways. It is, it is very important to manage the stress and find little ways to helping to eliminate the risk of burnout. But for some students, exams can be a breeze. Revision is a second nature to them. They could ace an exam with their eyes closed, but for others, it is sweaty palms and heart palpitations, just a part of the territory. And it seems that nothing is more impossible than sitting down and revising. And here are some handy tips that you can help to dissipate stress and make sure that you can get through the exam season. Uh, before that, before we go to the strategies, first of all, we will have to make out how, uh, what is examination stress looks like. Uh, if you could look at the individual, the physical signs would be fast heartbeat, uh, tense muscles, headache, uh, sweating, upset stomach, nausea, diarrhea, dry mouth, difficulty in sleeping. So these are the physical signs. Very evidently, you can see it. If you focus on the behavioral signs, students themselves can make out. It's, it's fidgeting, nail biting. If, if, if there is such a habit, increased smoking, drinking, or eating. They eat a lot just to avoid the stress. We call it as binge eating. And then when it comes to mental and emotional signs, it includes Difficulty in concentrating, raising thoughts, going blank, worry, and uncontrolled feelings of fear, dread, and helplessness. So these are the three main areas where the stress is manifested. So we have, we have come to know what uh, stress exactly uh, looks like. If you if we further move on towards it, some signs of stress also include feeling confused. On the day of the examination, students sometimes feel like, you know, I'm going to answer the questions. I'll, I'll exchange the answers. I'm totally confused. I don't know which answer from which question. And then losing touch with friends, they become isolated, alone, feeling moody and low. They get very angry, aggressive. And then again, having trouble making decisions whether to sit for the studies, whether to focus on it, what to do, what not to do, and then feeling overwhelmed, lack of motivation to do anything. It is very difficult. They're depressed. And then trouble sleeping or getting out of bed. Some students sleep a lot. And then tense muscles or headaches, which are very common. We call it a stress headache also. Backside of the head, they get headache. It is one major symptom of stress. And then having an upset stomach or feeling sick, running to restroom here and now, fidgeting, nail biting, teeth grinding. There are so many things, you know, stress manifests itself. If, if we move on to the tips and techniques, strategies to, to, to face this challenge, huh, ideas that could be given is, you know, on that particular examination day, what is supposed to be done. Here are some tips to help exam day go smoothly because most of the time, students get very upset when, when they are about to go to the examination. You can see all these symptoms. So what are we going to do on that examination day? Organize everything much before. Don't keep it for the morning. Before you go to bed previous night, keep everything ready including your test uh, uh, pen, pencil, 
examination pad everything you can keep ready so that in the morning you get good time uh, to get prepared and go to the examination as uh, the sir said eat a good light breakfast this will help with the energy and concentration healthy breakfast go to the toilet before the exam starts which is very important and if you feel yourself getting worried before your exam spend some time focusing on your breathing slow breathing deep breathing a little bit of pranayama will definitely help you to get that focus back because you are well prepared for the examination but all these things are happening only on the examination day that's what we are supposed to remember and especially when you sit down to do your exam take time to slow your breathing and relax don't jump into writing relax go through the question paper read through exam uh, paper carefully underline the keywords and instructions we all know that brain is very good in identifying underlining words bold words it will catch immediately and your memory uh, uh, issues are you know resolved at that moment uh, work out how long you have for each question and section it has to be done very quickly and then aim to have to read answers through and to make any changes and then later you will have to keep some time if at all you want to make changes with it work on the questions that you find easiest first this is one of the uh, you know the best formula in any examination anyway difficult questions we are going to address later but now focus on the easiest question so that the scoring will be much better and as well as you know you will feel much good about it that okay i have answered good amount of questions okay i can with the relaxation i can go to difficult questions and there are some more uh, best ways to manage your stress levels and stay calm uh, during examination prioritize the revision the thing is you know if you are not confident about a particular chapter or a topic revise more the ones you already know you are very confident you can give attention later or you can have a quick revision about them prioritizing your time subject and workload can definitely make a big difference and help reduce the anxiety levels you will be able to ensure that the really important stuff is covered and at the right time that is the kind of confidence you are going to get make a table with the dates of each exam and how many topics need to be covered we call it as scheduling this will give you a clear idea how much time i have got to uh, improve a play on this particular how much i have covered and when should i start revising ready reckoner it is a planner it is a scheduler as you progress through your revision tick off the topics that you have already completed and then this will give you a small sense of achievement yeah i have done this knowing that you are making progress you know that that chart will tell you how much you have covered it shows your progress too make a revision time table quickly and then uh, this is pretty close related to the tip above but we can't emphasize enough how to take a bit of time to get yourself in order uh, you know will help you to reduce exam stress and uh, then exercise and eat healthily that was clearly said that has to be done because physical health and psychological health are intertwined if one is physical health is not okay psychological health cannot be okay at all if i am not feeling about myself even the my body starts reacting and and they they synchronize they synchronized with each other please remember that if you want to do well you want the stress levels to be down in that case you will have to keep even your body well and then sometimes the idea of exercising during times of high stress feels like you know that's the last thing i want to do but you will definitely feel better afterwards and you will have to you have to learn how to relax that is very important how to relax during uh, uh, examination time it is it is very very simple you know take little break uh, small breaks eating the right foods during the stressful time and then you know take a break from the social media that is also very important 
put your worries into perspective it means have a positive perception about your stress i am stressed because i am serious about my goal i am very serious about reaching my goal that is why i am feeling stressed don't think negatively don't think that i am going to forget everything during examination it will never happen once it is stored in your memory cells there is no system called erase in your brain so definitely it will be there but when you get more anxious and stressed you feel like you know i have forgotten everything it is more of a negative thought and then when it when it comes to dealing with the exam stress it is it is it is important to not to give yourself such a hard time don't be too harsh with yourself you know this is easier said than done but you are doing your best and that is the best you can do keep your eye on the bigger picture and remember that one result is in the end of the world that is what been you know repeated by every speaker this is not the end of the world you have a long journey to go it is only a beginning feel confident about yourself putting yourself under a lot of pressure can have a negative effect please remember and as much as, as a cliche as this is worrying really doesn't solve anything that is the slogan hmm. and then hmm. being kind to yourself during examination time especially when you have high anxiety and stress motivate yourself to work harder take some time to out of revision and pamper yourself as sir said you go to the kitchen talk to your mother have something ask your mother to prepare something which you like most catch up sometime with your nearest and dearest that will boost your morale if you fancy if you are very fancy treating yourself and then take a break go out with your friends go to a movie one or two hours then come back and sit you know, seriously for your studies if you are very much addicted to coffee tea alcohol and all please cut down it will definitely uh, you know going to affect your psychological health coffee is definitely a stimulant but it will increase your stress level too and 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 the same thing is applied to nicotine and if you can't cut them out completely try to do at least monitor your consumption don't take too much of coffee and tea drink a lot of uh, water herbal tea it will keep your body hydrated and allow you to cope better with the stress plus you can swap and then uh, moreover to avoid stress you need to feel confident about self that is that is the that is the only one way you know you can cut down the stress so you will have to do mock exams at home take a test paper examination paper before uh, one or two days before try to answer all the questions you will understand where exactly you are getting stuck where you are not confident enough not clear about your uh, you know uh, topics not able to answer very confidently so focus more on that and then improve your exam time management it is very common uh, for students to worry about time management the student who comes to me because i am an adolescent counselor most of the time i call february march is the season for me you know i get lot of students stressed out because of the examination fear examination anxiety and stress sometimes the toppers come for counseling we have heard students who have not prepared well they get stressed out but the toppers who are really doing ma'am please well summarize your talk ma'am uh, they 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 also you know get very much uh, uh, stressed out during examination time so i i would like to give 10 quick ways to eliminate uh, the exam examination stress if it is your anxiety at the high level watch a film it is okay or a tv show which is your favorite one or a comedy show which makes you laugh take a break and drink some herbal tea hot chocolate hot chocolate if at all you are used to it take a shower or a bath can help to relieve stress definitely cook or bake something if you are interested in it get some sleep and then exams are important very true but you are so much more than your exam results please remember that 
avoid other stress to people that's very important you know the ones i mean the ones with queue words outside the examination hall frantically trying to remember key dates and equations they will right. do nothing for your stress levels so these are all the very quick ways you can come out of your stress thank you so very much ma'am for your valuable uh, tips and dear learners and students if there are stress there are solutions as well you just need to implement them in your life that will make your life more stress free and beautiful let's move towards our next speaker and she is miss s padmashri ma'am please let us know what is the importance of self regulation for learning and preparing for examination ma'am please explain to us padmashri ma'am ma'am are we audible to you yes ma'am Yes, yes. ma'am. Please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Renu, ma'am. Namaste to all the viewers here. And uh, now we have seen our uh, different eminent speakers who had uh, shared their views and given uh, different strategies, tips for all the adolescent children to how to face the examination. And firstly, uh, our um, professor Anil ji had uh, spoken about. एग्जाम एक उत्सव है एग्जाम इज अ फेस्टिवल तो वट डू वी डू फॉर द फेस्टिवल फेस्टिवल के लिए हम लोग एक दिन में कुछ नहीं करते हैं वी डू द प्लानिंग बिफोर दैट वी गो फॉर शॉपिंग वी डू ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग वी डू ऑफलाइन शॉपिंग एंड वी बाय एसेसरीज वी हैव अवर ओन प्लान ईच ऑफ अस प्लान अवर फेस्टिवल एंड द मदर विल प्लान वॉट काइंड ऑफ डिशेज टू बी प्रिपेयर एंड द चिल्ड्रेन सजेशन आर टेकन so a festival has a planning the same way uska jo target hota hai we do have a target that is a festival so festival becomes an utsav when we are fully prepared for that so examination is also the same as our eminent speakers pallavi madam also had the, uh, given uh, the plan how to prepare for the examination and how to be mentally and physically be healthy virender ji had given various tips and bharti ma'am had given very beautiful uh, tip at the end that you are much more than the examination so what is that which is essential is self regulation so what is the self regulation uh, ma'am yes so that is nothing but directing and controlling one's own actions to so, hamari taraf se humne kya galti ki hai when a what is that gone wrong in my examination why i have failed or why i have performed low in my examination how do the students learn to do this this is on their own this is self isko kehte hain hindi mein ki nav ye jo hai sw vi niyamit shiksha matlab sw self se apne aap se jo hai bachcha jo hai shikshit hone ki prayas karta hai so how does this happen it is directing and controlling one's own actions where have i gone wrong what am i going to do how do i regulate myself yes so there are some sub functions in the self regulations uh like for example if we have a goal set for us ki i have to have my fitness i am putting on weight i am not uh, going out to play what to do so you have a goal set for you so what is that you are going to do for my fitness what i'm going to do i'm going to have time specified for that i'm going to plan my food i am going to see what kind of healthy food i'm going to take and then i'm going to maintain a food diary and i'm going to meet a coach i'm going to go to gym i'm going to uh, see the youtube channels in which uh, about food and about exercise there are lots of information so you plan so that is the same thing to be applied in self regulation in self regulation we have to first plan monitoring self observation first you have to see what is that going wrong in me what is that what i have to correct what is that i have to do to so give a self talk to yourself or to suggest to yourself that yes i am doing like this let me set my goal plan accordingly and then monitor it and then control it and evaluate these are the different steps of our self regulation so then what are the self evaluation as i said and then reaction accordingly we need to uh, see the reaction 
and modify it and control our mind. Ma'am, please the next. Sorry. So what is self-regulated learning? It is that where the child takes the responsibility. You take up the responsibility for your rise and fall. There is nobody, there is no external person here. It's you, your own learning you are applying to the academic success. How I'm going to learn and how I'm going to succeed in my academics. That is what you're going to do. So that is taking up the responsibility in your shoulders. You are not going to tell to others that because of you only I fail. You're not going to blame others. It's you. I can give uh, an example. Our uh, school now second pre-board is uh, happening and uh, one child had got uh, less marks when compared to the first pre-board, child got a very uh, less marks in the second. I asked what was the problem? First, you did good. Why did the second get less marks in the second? The child said, ma'am, uh, we had to go for a marriage, so my parents compelled me, so I had to go with them. So what is the problem here? So the students, you have to know what is your role, what is your responsibility, and where, where you have to focus now. So that is the thing you have to think. This is only one kind of self-regulated learning. You have to, to achieve your goal, you have to set the target, you have to set your plan, and you should not allow others to influence your target or your plan. On the next one. So first, as I said, the environmental self-regulation. You have to set your place where you can sit and study very well. Arrange a place where nobody disturbs you. You have to see that it's very comfortable for you. You have uh, somebody to help you. And what are the books needed? Keep only those books. Don't keep everything there and organize your area, the study area beautifully so that you sit there and you have good peace of mind and you have a positive vibe there and you feel that when you are sitting and studying, you are able to get lots and lots of uh, uh, mental power and you are able to memorize everything. So that will happen only when you realize and when you're aware of what you're doing. So you need to have the appropriate study material. All these things will happen only when you are going to put the efforts and when you are going to do whatever was being spoken here on in all these things, you have to realize and be aware and go ahead and attend to the environmental, you know, the lighting should be proper, the place should be proper, I said. And next is the behavioral self-regulation. How am I going to behavioral changes to Mary and her hair? How I'm going to regulate that? So we need to have a proper uh, you know, self-introspection to what I'm doing and what I should do. Am I doing the right thing? Am I towards my target? Am I focusing on it? So every minute of your uh, time should be focused towards your target. I am going to do this. So for this, is it going to be productive? I'm using this mobile phone now. I'm seeing this YouTube. Is it having some productive work? Uh, is it giving some information connected with me examination? If we are going to be every minute aware of what we are doing, definitely you'll become a very successful learner here. As we said, learning should not be a temporary thing. It should be a permanent learning. As Gandhiji said, I seldom remember what my teacher thought from the lesson. I remember only the uh, lessons of life, what has been, every lesson has got a message. Everything, whatever comes around us, we should, if we are aware, we get the information, we get the message of life skills everywhere. So these are the messages and learnings which we have to take and we have to uh, go ahead in our life, which is going to help us in our future. And the one, other one is monitoring and adjusting our cognitive uh, thing is the, our brain. They concentrate on the academic material, what, whatever is being given to us by our teachers. We, we are, lots of uh, materials are shared. Study materials uh, are being shared with the NCRT. You have got the Diksha portal. You've got lots and lots of things available for you in the online mode. And uh, your teachers give you the other materials to you, uh, you know, a hard copy of the study material. Everything is towards the examination only. So 100%, if you're going to use all these things, you are going to be an excellent self-regulator learner. So first, what is my goal? Uh, can we have the slide again, Martin? What is my goal? Yes. 
uh, what is uh, that I'm aiming for? Am I aiming for uh, which line, which is the area I'm going to go about? What is my target? How much marks I'm planning for? So when you start thinking of this, it means you started working on your strong areas as well as your weak areas. So consistent uh, studies about which even uh, Pallavi ma'am had mentioned that consistently you need to study. Without that, we will be losing the track and we won't be able to be successful in our target. So consistency in studies before, during, and then after even attending the class, we need to go on uh, going into the topic, getting information and then noting down, do the note making for that. And then effective strategies, the strategies which, which are flexible according to you, you can make the strategies flex flexible and you can work towards it, understanding it, understanding the concept and then your time management as we already discussed by our eminent speakers, which is very important and you need to give self rewards to yourself. Yes, today I have done this, let me relax for some time. So that relaxing comes only after you do a productive work. So you need to have a self record for the same. And then you need to also cope up with the stress, which comes along the way. The stress comes, exam stress comes only when we are not prepared properly, when we are not handling our emotions properly. The emotions, if balanced, we are not going to have any stress, then the examination is going to be a happy moment for us. Somebody said that when you see the exam paper, question paper, you should smile. And uh, when you find that the exam paper is very hard, you should smile more so that you become very comfortable and your brain is very comfortable remembering all the questions, answers. So make yourself comfortable. That's very important. Smile, that is important so that that will ease your brain. It will be making you more comfortable, allowing you to think. And the, uh, that is the self-control is very important as we have discussed and uh, dependability. Adapting the situation is also very important. The situation or the environment should be, uh, you know, you should make it flexible as per your comfortability, make it suitable for yourself. So don't depend on others. You are the one, you are the one who is responsible for your success. You are the one who is going to go ahead in your life and you are the one who is everything. So you are bigger than anything here. That is the thing very much essential which you have to nail it in your mind children. And the most, the process of self-regulating uh, the learning is first thing is planning. So without planning, as we said, any festival or anything, even for your friend's birthday party, you plan. What is that I'm going to buy for him or her? And what is the dress I'm going to wear? So everything is you know, planned. So the same with studies also, learning also. Without planning, we will not get that success which we have to get in, in our life. And this 9th to 12th standard is a roller coaster. You don't know when it starts and when it ends. So every minute of your life is very, very important, children. First is planning, and then accordingly, you need to monitor it, and then reflection of that. Did my planning work out? Did I get the marks which I have to get? Where did I lag? So self, you have to sit and then think, and then you have to execute your plan, and then make some changes accordingly, and then see the result, and again, go ahead. So this is a beautiful project which you give for yourself. That's very important. Self-testing hai ye. So ye jo hai, aap agar lenge, to aapki laksh ki prapti hogi hi. Isme koi bhi jo hai, apwaad nahi hai. Definitely you will be becoming a very, very successful person in your life. And once you become a self-regulated person, the qualities which you have in you is what is being now in demand in every organization. So according to the situation, you know how to act and you calm yourself when you're upset and you cheer yourself when you're feeling very low. And uh, you know what kind of communication you have to communicate in which place. And during the difficult times, how I should be, how I should cope up. And uh, you know you know how to adapt to the situations. So all these things, the learning planning will take you a long way in your life in other fields also. And that is what is essential in today's life. So we have to be very, very, um, you know, uh, careful in 
target and we have to make the goal setting and the goal setting can be uh, you know as uh, we have already discussed about the small goal settings which will lead to the long term and the short term and the long term and the long term goal we can achieve through the small or the short uh, you know, goals and why it is very very important this is the place where we have to look into it is very very important because we are in this society where we have to we have come with some skills ma'am please one summarize your talk ma'am yes ma'am each one has come with some talent here and there are different strategies which we have to adopt like you know first thing is uh, our breath consciously attending to our breath exercise and then awareness of a body sensation and attending to the care of the body and especially meditation takes you in a, to a long way where you can balance your emotions and you can go forward and you got lots of other self expressions through which you can nurture yourself give a self talk and this is the way you can become a very very successful learner in your life and that is what is the need of the hour and such citizens are very much essential in the development of the country of the nation and i would like to thank renu ma'am for giving me this opportunity and all the faculty members and in sir thank you thank you so very much padma shri ma'am and pleasure is all ours aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad aur sir professor anil we would like to know more about Uh, from uh, you uh, about the concluding remarks and what are what are the take away of the session sir please let us know sir professor anil sir i would request from uh, all the panelists if uh, they want to conclude the session or say want to say something or want to add something in this uh, discussion please add and say yeah uh, yes, i sir. think uh, you know all the four panelists have you know uh, well presented their point of view i think you know now it is the uh, part of the students to you know follow these actions hmm. i think uh, you know we follow like this slow and steady wins the right i think that is the message i want to you know give to the students don't be under tension be you know happy whatever the marks or grades you are getting no one should uh, look for uh, better performance the next time and uh, life is a long journey and uh, don't do not find shortcuts because shortcuts may lead to much uh, trouble and you will not you know long live in that route so please you know follow the you know path which is you know straight forward i think that is the only message and uh, i hope the other panelists want to make a last word please Yeah, I, the thing is, I, we spoke a lot about uh, the stress before the exam and during the exam. What I would like to add is, avoid the exam post mortem. You don't need to know how others had prepared and how they have done in their examination. You have done your done best. You can't go back and change your answers so that in the second you step out of the exam hall. So please remember that. Focus on your next exam. That is what I would like to add. Dr. Virendra sir, I, I, I you... request all the uh, students. Uh, whenever you are uh, getting anxiety about the exam, that uh, if the questions comes which I did not read, what happens? What is the choice we have? If you really don't get any answers, what you do? You cannot write. Why are going for exam? You are going for an exam to write the answers what you know. That's all. Anybody in the world do the same thing. So don't worry about the things which you don't get, which you you may not get in the exam hall. You are going to the exam hall only to write the question and answers what you know. This is the most important thing. And before exams, you all need to think that what are the choices left over. When exams are there, a lot of uh, things are there to study. When you are going to watch television or be on the WhatsApp or be on Instagram, you should raise the question: What for I am doing it? By doing this, really I am going to finish my syllabus. Why I am taking this choice? Any student have two choices before exams: hmm. studying and not studying. So if you are not taking a choice of not studying, what for you are not studying? Is it that your goal is going to finish it or not? So if you can keep challenging things, whichever you are practicing, which are unhelpful, which is not useful, this way you can orient yourself towards the exam and you can perform better. So 
So all the best for your exams. Thank you so very much, sir. And let me wrap up this session. But before that, let me thank all our esteemed panelists for being with us and for, for your valuable information uh, to all our students and learners for your tips, for your information. Thank you so very much, sir. And ma'am. Thank you. And thank you so very much, dear learners and viewers, for being with us and for your valuable comments. Uh, I would really appreciate your efforts. And as our Honorable Prime Minister also interact and addressed uh, students, a lot of students, their parents and teachers in Pariksha Pe Charcha today only. And he gave a lot of uh, good life lessons to all. And we can learn a lot from that particular life lessons. And dear learners and uh, viewers, he told you about the way how you can manage your time and how you can cope up with your stress and etc. And I'm quite sure you have learned a lot from this particular session and this session would be beneficial for you all. But uh, let me uh, wrap up. But before that, uh, let me share a very important piece of information with you all about G20 presidency. We are indeed very proud that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in country 2023, a nation that deeply, deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment to her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solution for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam or we can say the whole world is one family. With that, let me wrap up this session but you stay tuned to PM Evidya channels and NCRT official YouTube channel for more informative uh, programs and session. Me Renu Bhatt is taking your leave. Namaskar.